In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this farmhouse decor water wheel. If you wanna learn how to do it, well then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, and this project tonight has been a long time in the making. Not in the making, but a long time in my head, trying to figure out the logistics of how to do it and how to make it and how to show it to you guys. So, it took me a full day of squaring away and going through a couple of epic fails, but I figured it out and I've got it and it is adorable. Can't wait to show it to you. So before we get to it, hit that subscribe button down below, right down there, hit the bell next to it and join our Glue Dot family and be informed every time I upload a new video. Also, give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying my videos and leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. Well, my intros get pretty long. There's a ton of important important information down below, especially for my drawing. So if you want to know about that, go right down below and check out the extra information, including the items that you'll need for this project. All right, without further ado and without talking too long, let's get to this project. As always, I like to start out by painting anything that needs painting ahead of time. I'm going to be using this Rust-Oleum Hammered uh, Paint and Primer. You don't necessarily have to use that, but I got it for a dollar, so I don't remember where I got it. <laughs> I've had it for a while, so I'm going to be using that to paint my bucket here, but you can also use any kind of chalk paint or Apple Barrel has some great paints that you can use as well combining different colors. Um, Waverly makes a great chalk paint. So any number of paints that you can use on this, I just chose this because I have it and it was a dollar and it will be fast. So I know why that only costs a dollar. That little bugger leaked all over the place. It's all over my hands. Okay, what we're gonna work on right now is cutting these pieces to start forming our water wheel. And we're gonna be cutting out a long this line here. You can use probably use scissors as well. I'll try both and see what works better. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> scissors seem to work better, though they're not the easiest either. So I'm thinking maybe to try um, heating this up with a either hair dryer if you have a hot um, one of those hot air guns, that might work as well. So let's give that a try. So I have my old one from Stampin' Up, which I don't really use too much anymore, except for, for projects like this. So let's try heating it up a little bit and see if that helps. Boy, this is some tough plastic. Ugh. Well, it doesn't make it easier to cut, but it does make it softer so it doesn't crack. So I'm gonna try that again and also try my X-Acto knife. So we're getting some options in here together. And I think that was the winner, yay! So if you have an, an embossing blower, I don't even know what these are called anymore, that is a great option. You can use a hair dryer if you don't have an embossing tool. If you have one of these hot knives, that's another great one that should cut right through here with no problem. But for sure you're gonna need to heat up this plastic, otherwise, well, you saw what happened. Now we're gonna be using six of these craft sticks for each of our little round wheels here. And we're gonna go ahead and cut the ends off of these just at the where the curve ends because we wanna use as much of this stick as we can. And we're gonna go ahead and cut both ends off. 
Now we're gonna be gluing on our popsicle sticks and I'm gonna start with opposing sides first. So don't worry if you have that cracked piece, it's really not gonna affect anything, it's gonna be covered up. The hot glue seems to work just fine for this, so a little dot on each side it seems to be plenty to hold it as long as you make sure you hold it on there long enough that it actually dries because it does have a little resistance pushing against it from the curvature of this these pieces here. So now I, you can make this a completely Dollar Tree project by using the craft sticks that you get from Dollar Tree. I am going to opt to use these um, extra large craft sticks from Walmart. I think that cost-wise it will end up very close to the same, but what, because we're gonna be cutting these in half and also they're much wider. And we're gonna be using those to go around this inner part here. So it will take less time and as I said, cost-wise it should end up the same. Either one is up to you, it's your choice. I am definitely gonna go with the bigger ones just to make life quicker and easier. So I'm gonna be cutting the curved ends off of these as I did on the smaller sticks, and then I'll be cutting these in half. Okay, so I cut about 16 sticks in total, and this is a 45 pack, so that just shows you that it's pretty economical to, to go this route. We're gonna be taking these now, our two wheels here, we're gonna start gluing our pieces in just like that. So we're gonna go all the way around and we're gonna get all of those placed and the hot glue seems to be working just great for the, the wood to the plastic. I was thinking I might need a little bit of the E6000 in there, but I actually don't. So save your E6000 for another project. We may need it later in this one, not sure. But for right now, we're just gonna stick with the hot glue. I'm putting it right inside that lip there and try and make sure it's as straight as possible because you want your wheel not to be crooked. So we're gonna need to do one side first and then we will be attaching the other side just like that and our water wheel will come to life. So in case you've never seen my little glue gun trick, you see that I'm at the end of my glue stick here. And what I do usually is put a little dot of glue on the end of my next stick and put it in there and it sticks to the previous one so that way it doesn't fall out. Just a little tip and trick to help. I hope you like it. Put your next piece in and butt it up directly against the other one if you can. There may be an itty bitty space in there, kind of see because maybe these sticks are a little crooked or maybe we put them in crooked, I don't know, but we'll find out. Just work our way around. So I'm trying this project with you guys. I didn't make it ahead of time, so we are all gonna learn from any mistakes that I make. Because I feel like, you know, sometimes people are afraid to try something new, but don't be because you know, we all have our moments. <laughs> it doesn't always work out perfectly, even people who craft all the time. As I'm getting more around to finishing, I kinda had to stand it up because you can no longer see past your pieces anymore to see if they're in place. So kinda standing it up here and coming around and let's see how we end up. I don't know if it's even gonna end up exact or if we're gonna have to overlap a little bit. As I said, we're doing this project together for the first time. It looks pretty close. There is gonna be a little bit of a space. Well, I'm going to add in an extra stick there just to fill that space in. So here's what we've got so far. And now we're gonna be figuring out how to get our other piece on there. So I think what I'm gonna do is a little bit of glue at a time and then slowly put the pieces in there. So what I'm gonna do is the ones that are in there already that are not glued in as of yet, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue and then press them against that outer wall to get them in place. And then work my way all the way around until I get all of them inside there. 
Okay, got it all glued together. And now we're gonna be painting this. So you can opt to leave the popsicle stick the same color if you'd like to, or you can go ahead and paint the entire thing. I'm gonna be using my burnt umber from Apple Barrel. This was from Walmart, but I'm sure you can find any acrylic paints too at Dollar Tree and use those. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this whole thing painted brown with my burnt umber. So to do the stick part of this, I actually added a bunch of water with some of my paint so that I could sort of give a little uh, less color to the wood than I had on the rest of the, the outside of the wheel. And I purposely chose yellow um, Frisbees so that it will actually show a little bit of variation through. Okay, so I got everything painted and I went around and did just a tad bit of dry brushing on the spoke wheels here. And I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry really, really well. Then in the meantime, I'm gonna work on some of our other pieces. Okay, so I went and I got my tin from outside and I hated the way it looked. It was too shiny and too nice with that spray paint. So I just took random paints that I had and I just started sponge painting away. <laughs> you can see I had quite a mix going and this is what I came up with. So. You know what, play with that. You may even like to just leave it the silver color it was. What we're gonna be doing now is throwing our floral foam in to fill this up. And I have kind of some random pieces of floral foam that I had from different projects, different places. I don't even know where they're from. So I'm just gonna put in a bunch of it and kind of shove it in there to fill this up. Okay, the next thing, now that you got all your floral foam in there, we're gonna be taking the tongs and shoving the one as far as you can go over to the edge and shove it down in there as far as it will go. It's pretty firm in place, but I am gonna add some hot glue in there too to hold my floral foam in place and then to also give a little bit of hold to those tongs. And try and make sure that those are evenly upright too. So now we're gonna put the other one in. You're gonna to wanna to use your water wheel to figure out approximately where your other tongs are gonna to be placed. Now that I kind of have a rough idea of where it's gonna go, it's gonna be right about here. I'm gonna take and shove those in and making sure that those are also as upright as possible. So you have this right now. Okay guys, I've tried a couple ways. I've had some epic fails here, so you're gonna get the pleasure of learning from my mistakes. <laughs> Do have your brown paint on hand because your little water wheel is gonna get scraped up and you know, kind of beat up a little bit. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking one of our dowel pieces and it will be resting on these little metal pieces that normally hold the tongs closed. But first what we need to do in the side of our water wheel, we need to make a hole right there in this center part, right between where all the sticks are. And to do that, we're gonna be using our hot knife. Now you can try with your tip of your hot glue gun, but um, I found this plastic to be just really I don't know, it's a really hard plastic for some reason. So as you saw in the beginning when we were trying to initially get our spoke pieces cut out. So this, this hot knife doesn't seem to have any problem at all getting through it. So I would really recommend this hot knife. If uh, it's a walnut hollow and I will leave a link for it down in the description box. So in case you're interested in picking one up, it definitely is a game changer for crafting. So there we go, we've got one hole cut in there and we're gonna go ahead and cut the hole on the other side. Now what we're gonna be doing is to make sure we have the right length of dowel, we're gonna measure in between our tongs and make sure you leave a little bit extra so that it doesn't slip out. So you're gonna go ahead and take your scissors. And if you don't already have these garden shears from Dollar Tree, they are great. 
Put your water wheel in place and pass the dowel through on top of the little metal piece there through the water wheel and through to the other side. And there we have it and it even spins. How do you like that? Mine's a little cockeyed as you can probably see, but <laughs> that's okay. It gives it character, you know? It's my imperfect water wheel, kind of like life and like crafting. And I'm gonna put a good amount in there of my hot glue because I really want that to hold and I don't want my stick to fall out and have my project fall apart. Um, for the rustic feel that's going on with this, my tongs are a bit too shiny. So I'm actually gonna take some uh, of my black paint and some of my white paint, and I'm kinda gonna just go over that a little bit, either with a sponge brush or a dry brush or just something to kind of um, break that shininess up. So you can see a comparison. Here is the one that I just kind of, I mixed together a little black and a little white, and here's the other one. I think it looks much nicer having that rustic feel to it since the whole thing has a rustic feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the other side. Okay, now we're gonna work on putting in the floral moss. I had this moss already. There are several different kinds at Dollar Tree, so you can kind of just pick out whichever one that you like. And I'm just gonna go in and make a mess all over my floor. No, <laughs> yes, that too, but I'm just gonna go in and fill in these areas with the moss. Okay, so. now that I have all that moss in place, I'm gonna actually take some of my um, twine and cut a small piece about an inch and a half long and what I'm gonna be doing with that is using that to hang my little buckets. So. I've put that kind of around the handle like that. Figure out kind of where your placement, I've got six buckets in total, so I'm gonna do three on each side. One is gonna go somewhere up here and put my little dab of glue there for it and attach that down. So I'm gonna be repeating that process, hanging all six of my buckets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead, I got all my buckets glued on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my flowers in and kind of decorate it up, and then I will show it to you. If you're enjoying my channel, hey, give me a big old thumbs up. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys, you know the drill. I'd love to have you join the Glue Dot family. Hang on, let's see how this turned out. <laughs> 